welcome to the Cutting the Cheese podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Kohner, and today we have a different kind of Green Bay Packers-centric episode. Uh, we will be talking, we will be talking about some of the Green Bay Packers legends, some of whom are right above my shoulder, as we will count down the most five, the five most important and legendary Packers figure in the franchise history. Without further ado, let's start with the ones who started it all, with Earl Curly Lambeau and George Whitney Calhoun. Who are these who are these people you ask? Well, the former football rivals would band together to form the Packers in nineteen 19- when Curly Lambeau would earned the money from his former employer, the Indian Packing Company in Green Bay, hence the nickname of the team, to allow him to form the team with his former friend and rival, George Whitney Calhoun, would, who would later uh, go on to be a local newspaper rep- reporter covering the early days of the Packers. Earl Curly Lambeau, however, would go on to coach the team for the first 30 years of its existence. So, we have these individuals to thank for giving us this podcast platform, because without whom, without them, we wouldn't have a team to be able to talk about and cover. The fourth on my list is... At number four on my list, we have Bart Starr. Bart Starr is his legacy as the Packers quarter. Bart Starr began the legacy of the Green Bay Packers quarterback position. During the 1960s, when he played under the great Vince Lombardi, Hint, who you may or may not see at the conclusion of this list. He is synonymous with arguably the greatest and the greatest plays in Green Bay Packers history. He led the team to the first two titles in the Super Bowl era and was a contributing factor winning quarterback in the winning quarterback sneak in the game known as the Ice Bowl when the Packers faced the Dallas Cowboys in in 19 when the stadium weather was the coldest on record at at any NFL game thus far at a frigid negative 13 degrees and that fateful day January 15th of 19th would lead them to play the Chiefs in the first ever Super Bowl the organization and for good reason this would start a string of quarterbacks on my list as I have uh, Brett Favre at number three. The Southern Mississippi native played for the Packers from for 15 seasons from 1992 to 2000. He would guide the Packers to win Super Bowl 31 at the conclusion of the 1996 season. He would also earn three NFL MVP honors from 19 to 1997 consecutively. In the same season, he earned all pro honors. Brett Favre also earned impressive 11 trips to the Pro Bowl during during his illustrious career with the franchise. He is a Green Bay Packer legend and Hall of Famer, and like Bart Starr, his number four is also retired. However, his dis his disloyalty to the team especially going on to play for a division rival in the Minnesota in the Minnesota Vikings earned him a mediocre spot and a lower spot on this list at 2 the number 2 the number 2 the number 2 player on this list is Aaron Rodgers and now forgive me if i might seem to have a bit of recency bias recency bias but i would be remiss to acknowledge the person and the team that made me a fan of the packers when they won super bowl 45 
in in 20 that team had the likes of Clay Matthews, uh, Jordy Nelson, Donald Driver, Greg Jennings, Charles Woodson, and AJ Hawk. So that would that would and I was I was just enamored by the talent they had on the team. And of course, at the young age, at the young age I was around, let's see, like, let's see, uh, 13, 14 years old, um, I was easily amiable, I was easily, I was easily influenced by members of my family and friend group who had, who also had an affinity for the Packers and that's exactly what my family friend had at the time. And that with the combination of the talent that they had on the team allowed me to become the diehard fan of the team that I am today. And ultimately, uh, they are the reason and my family friend is the reason and uh, you know who you are if you uh, are watching this. Those are those two reasons are the reasons why I have this platform to discuss this with you guys today. So for that, I'll be uh, grateful for. But besides that victory and the team that made me love the Packers, uh, Rodgers has four MVPs. 10 Pro Bowls, and, and all pros on his resume. A uh, fun fact is, during his Super Bowl season, he was named Athlete of the Year by the Associated Press. And that's, ironically, one thing that I didn't really, I didn't really know about him, going, going into getting little tidbits and researching for this video. So, even though I'm quite familiar with all his accolades, that's one thing I didn't know, and the Associated Press is one of the most notable uh, pieces of media, and he won that the same year that he won the Super Bowl in 2011 with that uh, so-called super team when they uh, beat the Pittsburgh Steelers 31-25 to in Arlington, Texas. Um, so despite his undeniable Hall of Fame career with the Packers, and despite, despite, uh, the fact that he's on the Jets now, I have all the respect for Aaron Rodgers and what he did for Green Bay and hope he, uh, continues to perform well and continue to, continue to build upon his legacy as an individual and, I really appreciate all he did for the Packers. And I know Jordan Love has, as we've seen throughout this uh, previous season, and will continue to build upon the legacy of the quarterback position in Green Bay. I have the, as we'll discuss in other videos, I have the utmost confidence in Green Bay front in the Green Bay front office that Jordan Love will be the Packers uh, quarterback of the future and they will get a contract extension done in the next few months. But we will discuss that more in depth when we go into the free agency uh, recap on the next podcast episode of this cutting the cheese pod of this cutting the cheese enterprise that we have uh this video will be posted on uh youtube uh for you guys to watch but none of the individuals i mentioned whether it's earl curly lambo or bart Starr or brett Favre or aaron Rodgers, compares to the legacy of this individual I'm about to 
mention. And by the way, obviously Curly Lambo is the is the namesake of Le- Lambo Field. Uh, but this individual that I'm about to mention, along with Curly, also has his very own statue at Lambeau Field. And if that hint didn't give it away for fellow Packers fans, yes, I am talking about Vince Lombardi. Unbiasedly, he is arguably the one of the greatest coaches of all time. Lombardi would coach the Packers. From 1959 to 1967, his incredible career would see him win three times NFL, the three-time NFL champion uh, prior to the two Super Bowl wins he won prior to the Super Bowl era, which began in uh, 1910. He was also a two-time coach of the year. The Pro Football Hall of Famer is in the Ring of Honor for two separate franchises, one being the Green Bay Packers and the other one being the Washington Commanders, whom he was the coach prior to his death in 1970. But he is also a member of the the 100th anniversary team. Not to mention, he is the namesake of the highest uh, on-the-field honor that that a uh, NFL team could could get um, in the Super Bowl trophy. After after he unfortunately died of colon cancer, he was given, his namesake was given the honor of, his name was given the honor of adorning the Super Bowl trophy which is given out every year so it's and it's the hot as I said before it's the highest on the field honor that teams could get every season so if that doesn't um, show you the undeniable uh, mark that he's had on this league and not only the Packers I don't know what will but that's about it for today's video. Um, so, if, uh, like I said, this video is going to be posted on YouTube. So, if you think we missed anybody uh, who you think we should be on this list, who you think should be on this list, feel free to comment and comment who you believe it is and why you think that individual should be on the list. But until next time. I'm your host, Jacob Kohner, and this has been the Cutting the Cheese Podcast. See y'all later.